Hmm. <laughs> oh my God, that's fucking horrible. Just kidding. It's actually quite fantastic. For anyone who's been following me for a few years, I used to have a whiskey glass in my hand constantly. I've since ceased doing that because day drinking is, well, terrible for productivity. I guess quick detour, I used to do that a lot more often in my videos because at the end of an evening, I would be drinking anyway to take the edge off and it just made it more fun to be in front of a camera and improvise. Now, I get to make videos like this with a $200 bottle of whiskey from Iron Smoke with a John Petrucci collaboration called Rock the Barrel 2. I get to write this shit off. This isn't even a deduction on my taxes. It's an expense because I'm making a video about it. Fantastic. This is the original Rock the Barrel 1. This was 120 proof big boy balls. This whiskey was also about $230 and absolutely killed, was fantastic. The new Rock the Barrel, Rock the Barrel 2, is 93 proof, apparently to be an homage to the year that John Petrucci got married to his wife, that was the year 1993. So what's the online description? Rock the Barrel 2, special edition, 93 proof bourbon whiskey, dropping soon, it's already dropped. Now, dropping soon, now available. All right, just a heads up, clean that up on your website. Authenticity, perfection, and their mastery for the crafts. These are the foundational pillars of the incredible collaboration between legendary guitarist, John Petrucci of Dream Theater, and award-winning craft, award craft bourbon whiskey distillers, Iron Smoke. After selling out the first batch of Rock the Barrel in less than 18 hours, that's pretty freaking awesome, Grammy award-winning guitarist John Petrucci and internationally acclaimed crap blah 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 blah, this smoother, easier to drink edition features a fresh flavor fro- ugh. This smoother, easier to drink edition features a fresh flavor profile, new artwork, who cares about the artwork elements, and the unique combination of John Petrucci's personal taste and Iron Smoke's commitment to excellence. That is code for, it's a combination of us distilling shitloads of private barrels and John coming in and tasting all of them and picking one. So did John have anything to do with the creation of this whiskey? No, but John puts his name on it and that puts a certain amount of his seal of approval, his taste. Speaking of taste, let's see what John's taste is like. Okay, so the first thing I noticed right when it hits the tongue, instantly caramel, right up front. There's a little bit of spiciness. You can get a little bit of the corn grain alcohol taste. Now, at the end here, there is a hint of sweetness. As the whiskey dissipates in your mouth more and more, you get a little bit more of that round green apple type of flavor. That green apple finish is so subdued the words that they choose on their website is a whisper, a whisper of green apple. I think that's actually an apt uh, poetic comparison. Let's do this again. Ah, ah, oh, it's wonderful. It's great. Like I said in my review of the first round of Rock the Barrel, I haven't had enough top shelf whiskey experiences, especially with bourbon, to know if this is really worth the price. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here on both of them. As you can see from the first batch, I thoroughly enjoyed the entire thing. As you can see from the second batch, I'm almost done thoroughly enjoying the entire thing. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. My conclusion is I don't think it's worth $200 without John Petrucci's name on it. And I already understand the critiques up front. Well, if it doesn't have his name on it, then why would you spend the extra money to have his name on it? Because I'm a massive fan. I was well aware what I was getting into up front. Obviously, this is a limited run whiskey, so that's already going to take the cost higher. This is a specialty craft for them. This is not something they normally produce, so that's going to be even higher in price. And it's a collaboration with John, which most likely means he's getting a cut, but he's also putting his credibility on it and his ability to sell, so that's even gonna take the price a little bit higher. Let me do this again. Hmm. Caramel, corn whiskey, some smoke, then let it dissipate. Much smokier at the end. Mm, that's a 10. Now, 
the apple creeps in. Now, comparing that to the flavor of Rock the Barrel 1, Rock the Barrel 1 was much more like taking a punch from one punch man, like a haymaker and a kamehameha combined into one, just coming straight at you full force right up front. It was a lot to handle at first, to be honest with you, but the flavor was not lacking whatsoever. It was just very intense. One of the things I loved more about the first batch was how much more pronounced the applewood smoking came at the back end. It gave you this beautiful caramel apple sensation without adding any of this fakeness or like plastic type of character to a lot of these other flavored whiskeys that are out there or flavored vodkas. That's mostly trash. This is an artisan work, all natural, beautiful. I'm gonna do another one. Mm. Say it with me now. Caramel up front, corn whiskey is the, the primary profile after that caramel. Pronounced smokiness that kind of does like a little travel around the mouth and, and back of the throat. And then, and then, now the apple begins to appear ever so lightly. Uh, part of what I think hides that apple is how pronounced the corn whiskey flavor is in this. And I would say much more so than the original Rock the Barrel. It was a lot denser, so you had much more of that caramel flavor and a bit of like a spiciness overwhelming a lot more of the corn whiskey elements. This is far brighter, very smooth, like scarily smooth. It still has a bit of that bourbon bite. Again, the corn whiskey element is in there. That's hands down the bitiest part. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. Oh, it's wonderful. It's dangerous. The saddest part about how easy it is to drink is the fact that it's so expensive. If that was, and you're not gonna find a whiskey like this at this price, if that was a $60 bottle of whiskey, I would love it. I would constantly be at it. It's, it's so beautiful, very refined. Still gives you a little bit of that kick that, that a lot of people like out of bourbon, but it's not a strong kick. But that's also probably why it is so damn expensive is because to get that level of precision, refinement in that flavor takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. Probably takes some really quality ingredients as well. I'm still perfectly okay with spending $200 for either one of those bottles. And that has, again, one, it's a limited run. I get to say that I had it. And considering how large of a Dream Theater fan I am, that's really cool. Also, massive whiskey fan. Okay, let's let's step back for a second. John Petrucci loves whiskey, loves barbecue, loves guitar and metal music, loves Metallica, loves Dream Theater, and also I believe is Catholic. I'm not practicing Catholic, but still have very large sentiments towards that that practice and, and tradition. Uh, why aren't we best friends? Seriously, we have this much in common. At this point, it's just like John, just just given. We're gonna be best friends. It's it's just bound to happen. But yeah, John, considering this is the one and the the first edition are your tastes and what you picked, you have great taste, man. Absolutely gorgeous. I think it also complements the type of music that you do. On the website, it, it says something about um, like his music, all killer, no filler. Such a boiled down marketing bullshit term that does not properly describe how much I think this fits your music personality. The first bottle I would say is closer to like Dream Theater's song Panic Attack, where there's a lot of depth, there's a lot to dig through and a bunch of different flavors, but it's not overly complex so much as it's just constantly assaulting you and destroying you. This whiskey I would say is closer to like another day off of the Images and Words album. There's an elegance, there's a smoothness, there's still a very strong element of rock and metal, but when I taste this, all I hear is that coming from the, the saxophone, it's just like, hmm. That's that's 100% the vibe, just, ah, happiness. Uh, would I recommend? Yes, I would absolutely recommend this if you have the cash for it. If you're not a John Petrucci fan, you might feel like you're overpaying potentially. And considering it's a limited run, you might not get the chance to try it again. All right, I'm gonna finish this and uh, I'll catch you guys soon-ish, maybe, I don't know.
Depends upon how much of this uh, is going to do some of the speaking for me. Mm. Delicioso. 